Uh, good morning, everyone. I have to uh, thank, thank uh, Frank uh, this invitation because uh, I'm really, really glad to be here with you uh, because I think that uh, this kind of events are very, very important in the European projects. Uh, in fact, uh, I've been in Brussels uh, this week and for the Erasmus Plus, uh, for the Erasmus Plus uh, program, um, the, the European Commission wants uh, especially to focus in the dissemination and information of the projects that uh, all the beneficiaries uh, carry out. So I congratulate you for this work. I think that uh, uh, you have done a, a really, really wor uh, good work uh, with this uh, Congress, and it's, it's a, a really a good opportunity uh, for everybody to know how to Im implement different projects, uh, showing uh, what, what do you have um, nowadays uh, in, in Spain and other countries. So uh, my aim uh, here is at uh, showing you what we do in the Organismo Autónomo Programas Educativos Europeos and what you can, can do in, in the actual program and the new program that is Erasmus+. Plus. We don't have much information in this moment because it's, in, it's still in definition, but uh, you can see some ideas that could help you to think in new projects for that program and uh, fulfill uh, the objectives that Alfredo has pointed you before. In our case, in the Organismo Autónomo, Programas Educativos Europeos, we publish the call for proposals for national projects. So in our case, in all the institutions that are interested in participate in, participate in the call for, for proposals that are at national level have to review our subsite and uh, submit the application in our institution. So those projects are decentralized projects. That's the difference between um, both of them. So you can uh, think about asking for one type of project or the other type. Here I can show you uh, what is what we have now. Now we have exactly the uh, lifelong learning program which Alfredo has uh, told you uh, before. And uh, in, this, uh, in this program, uh, we have mainly uh, four sub-programs. Cominius, that is focused on education, uh, school education level. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci, which is, uh, uh, which is for the BIT, uh, v -E -T, uh, educational level. Uh, Erasmus, that is for higher education level, and Grunbig, which is for adult education. Here you can see all the uh, different actions that each sub-program contains, and the, one, the, the, mm, the bold ones are mm, uh, the, the actions that we manage from the Organismo Autónomo Programas Educativos Europeos. Now, what we are going to have early. Next year begins Erasmus Plus program that is meant uh, to, to dure seven years from 2014 uh, to 2012, for 22, sorry. And here we have a mainly three actions, three key actions. The key action one, that is focus on mobility. The key action two, that is focus on strategic, strategic uh, partnerships and other uh, projects of cooperation. And key action three, that uh, is focused mainly in youth decentralized projects and especially in projects that enhance political reform in education. Uh, in our case, we are going to manage uh, mainly uh, the action one and the action two. 
uh, the mobility in all the levels and strategic partnerships. The other actions are going to be managed from Brussels, from the uh, European Commission. Let's see uh, what are the main goals of these actions. Uh, for the first one, the, the main goal is to uh, provide opportunities for mobility for individuals. The second action is especially, if you can see there in this slide, for international co cooperation. And here, uh, I, can, I, I want to focus uh, in the development and implementation of innova innovative practice in education, training, and youth activities. For example, the, the projects that has uh, been shown here during these days has been mm, focused in, in, this, uh, in this line. Uh, so it is very important for the European Commission to implement uh, projects in this line in the development and implementation of innovative practice in education with the support of ICT. Uh, in the action three, mainly uh, is focused in exchange of good practices at high level um, in order to um, uh, in order to have a political education um, that is uh, in, the, in this uh, in this line uh, so um, the European Commission have a uh, interest in implementing transparency, uh, transparency tools, cross-country studies, uh, and support uh, specific policy agendas as Bologna. Now that we have seen this, I want to think about uh, the latest trends in education which you have seen during these days because you have seen uh, e-learning, mobile learning, gamification, and others, uh, others projects that are quite interesting. Uh, so I, I want to point you in one of them that I think that is um, uh, the reason for the projects that I, ho I, I am going to show you uh, later. And here you have uh, the main categories of e-learning. You have uh, informal, informal courses, you have courses that are very, very tight structure. You have blended uh, learning, which mixes face-to-face -face learning with online learning. You have communities, you have knowledge management, you have networks uh, of knowledge. You have work-based learning, which is now very important. There are a lot of people working at work, learning with their partners, doing networks. And it's important to have in, in mind the tools and delivery that is used in this uh, technology. And of course, the ubiquitous uh, learning. So uh, as the projects that I'm going to show you I will, uh, are related to mobile learning, uh, I want to analyze with you how this technology, this methodology, methodology uh, have uh, evolved. Firstly, uh, was e-learning. E-learning use computers, networks. Uh, after e-learning with the mobile phones, we have uh, develop another learning methodology that is mobile learning and is now very, very, very important yeah, and I think that have uh, a lot of opportunities. Uh, and actually, we have the context aware ubiquitous uh, learning. We use sensors to learn in the context. So let's see some figures of mobile learning. Uh, if, we, if we look at uh, this picture, uh, we, uh, this is a study that uh, Gungwa Society have done with uh, parents of uh, kids uh, from three years to 12, uh, who are from three years to 12 years old. And um, we can see that uh, mm, a lot of children have access to mobile devices. So the opportunity to use these devices 
for learning is very, very high. Uh, the, the sensation, uh, the feeling of the parents is that uh, children can learn maths and even can learn uh, to read better if they use these devices. Furthermore, uh, they mm, not only learn better, but they are more motivated and they, of course, improve their creativity. So why don't use these devices to, uh, for the learning of our children? We can see here the advantages and disadvantages. Which are the main advantages? Well, they are modern, they are convenient, they save time, of course. They are flexible because you can learn whenever, wherever. Uh, they are very interesting. You can find a lot of applications that are useful for you, that are adapted to different kinds of uh, people. Uh, you, ha you can access easily to the information, to that information, and of course, you can get stimulated uh, in the process of learning. As disadvantages, the cost of the, these devices is still quite high. Uh, sometimes you don't have access to the network, the battery. Mm, uh, perhaps uh, don't last long. Uh, they are very small, the displays are very small, the screens are very small, but if you see this uh, picture, you can see that the advantages are much more than the dis disadvantages. So, uh, I think that it's an opportunity to study and research in this field and to uh, implement projects in this field uh, in order to uh, to explore this this uh, sector, if, you, if we see the figures, um, you have here that the subscription uh, to mobile cellular, the mobile cellular subscriptions are quite quite near uh, to the number of the population. Mm, and the broadband uh, mobile the mobile broadband uh, is accessible for, uh, is growing year per year, so is more accessible uh, to the population. Here you can see how uh, most of the countries have access to mob mobile broadband, even developing countries. But we have to, to say that the cost of uh, mobile devices and broadband are not the same in all the countries. That's the, 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 the problem. The developing countries have very high costs, much more than, for example, European uh, countries. And even here in, in Europe, uh, we have a lot of differences. For example, in Spain, uh, the cost is much <laughs> is higher than, than the cost, uh, for example, in the UK. Uh, other fact is that uh, there is a gap, uh, a gender gap between men and women. Uh, so, if we work in in solving these differences and these gaps, I think that it could be a, a good way to motivate the learning and to improve the learning of our our students and not only our students but everybody. Uh, the, uh, those um, uh, projects have been uh, considered of high level in the European Commission. So the, the first example is collage. This uh, was made, uh, was carried out uh, between 2006 and 2008. Uh, this is important because if you see, um, ha uh, there have been a lot of projects since uh, 2006, even before, uh, related to mobile learning. So we have uh, uh, done a, 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 lot of, uh, a lot of research in this, in this field. Um, in, this, uh, in this project, uh, they focus on the possibility of mobile phones in game uh, gamification. Uh, so they, they use the games uh, of mobile phones 
to improve the learning. So they, they have in, in their site, they, they have uh, different uh, games that uh, teachers can use with their pupils at school mainly. The second example is Ensemble. Uh, in this project, they have uh, uh, gathered a lot, uh, the best, best practices in ICT, um, mobile learning. Uh, these be, uh, best practices are from different countries and can uh, help other countries to improve their methodologies at, uh, at school and to use those experiences in their, in their processes of learning. Uh, this project was done, uh, was carried out uh, between 2008 and 2010. The third project is the future. And in this project, this is uh, still uh, working. The site is active, what is important. One of the strongest recommendations of the European Commission is that the projects that are done under the framework of the programs, um, uh, live learning program or the future Erasmus Plus program, uh, is that the projects are sustainable. Not only, it's interesting that the projects not only are done, are carried out during the funding period, but <coughs> that uh, they can go on after that period. Mm. This is an example of this kind of projects. In this case, they, they have the site act active and uh, they have a lot of information. They have research done about how mobile phone uh, can improve, in this case, uh, the learning in uh, people in risk, uh, uh, that, are in, uh, that are in risk. So uh, it's important here you have, I'm not going to, to show you everything, but here you have in the, in the slide the access to the website, website so you can uh, explore, surf and explore what they have there, what they have there. And the last one is and a Spanish one that I think that's very important to see, one that is Spanish, that is Española La Carta, and in this case uh, is uh, active too, and is supported by the government, as you can see there, uh, is uh, in the Plan Avanza. So this is another example that I think that is very important because they not only carried out the project during the funding period, uh, but they also go on with it actually. So this project is, uh, uh, provide uh, a lot of tools for mobile phones and um, online uh, for people that work, uh, for immigrants in, in this case, that work in the restaurant sector. You can see it in the website that you have here, there, and they have a lot of materials you can, uh, th that you can download and use in your mobile phones or in your uh, PCs. So if you want to, to carry out a project, if you want to uh, apply for a project or submit a project, what you can do? Well, I think that the best way is first research what other people have done. So where do you can find this? Uh, I here have uh, three examples, but there are of course much more. Here have, uh, you have the Educational uh, the Visual and Culture so the Agency Searcher, uh, where you can find all the projects that they publish of all the beneficiaries that have done uh, projects during the life learning program. There you have the, the URL. This other site is a partnerships and results in Comenio Leonardo da Vinci and Grunbig site. Here you can find different projects of those sub-programs, Cominius and Leonardo da Vinci, especially related to partnerships. And this other one is Adam, Projects and Products Portal for Leonardo da Vinci. This is used especially 
for transfer and innovation projects. And in this case, it's the same. You have a lot of projects. You can see what they have done. You can see what products and results they have uh, obtained with those projects. So I think that in th those sites can help you to find ideas and see what you can do in your, in your organization or institutions. Uh, of course, there is another platform that I don't, I don't have here. But I think that this is quite important that this e-twinning, I don't know if you, you know it, but e-twinning uh, is very useful, mainly for, I have to say, that it's not very useful for higher education, it's more useful for uh, school education, but if some of you are at, those level, at that level, you, you can use it uh, to search projects or even partners. And conclusions, what I can say, well, I can say that uh, Erasmus uh, Plus is coming, as Alfredo before have, have said, is an opportunity to improve uh, our participation and to, to have access to European funds. I hope that the government, the national government, uh, could help uh, the institutions too. Second, Erasmus Plus, which support projects in education and innovation, is very important, this line uh, of work, of research. Uh, mm, new trends in learning with ICT, to, uh, ICT tools could be researched, so focus on that uh, line. And, of course, there are many examples of previous projects that could help you to find new ones and decide what you can do. And that's all. Thank you very much for your attention and thank you for the organizers for this opportunity. Uh, I don't know <laughs> if we have time for questions or we left it. Okay. Uh, so I pass the floor to the next.